Value never looks so good. Hello and welcome. I'm Trudy Mason. Today's project is perfect for our cold winters. Neck warmers that you can customize. You can make them longer or shorter. You can make them higher on your neck or lower. And you can express a little bit of personality with the embellishments that you choose. I went to Fabricville and I took a look at some of the boiled wool that they have there. This is a great fabric because, well, it's a wool blend, so you know it's going to be nice and warm. Comes in a variety of colors. And an interesting thing from a design perspective is that the back of the fabric is often a little bit different from the front so that you can use either depending on what look you're going for. Sometimes it's very different actually on the back which raises great design possibilities. The standard shape of this type of neck warmer brings the ends of a rectangle of fabric together in a point at the front and ordinarily to fasten it you'd have uh, two or three buttons up here but I'm a craft sewer. Buttonholes intimidate me, so I decided no buttonholes on my neck warmer. I decided that instead I would use snaps, two snaps placed here, and then lovely buttons on the top. You have to go to Fabricville and take a walk along the button wall, you'll find something for sure to go with the fabrics that you choose. In addition to the boiled wool, you'll want something for the side of the neck warmer that goes against your skin. Now, I'm allergic to wool, so I didn't want wool on the inside as well as the outside. I chose a couple of different options for the pink neck warmers you'll see. The inside fabric is a 100% cotton quilting fabric. For this one, this is a very thick and cozy cotton flannel. Just a reminder, if you're using cotton fabrics, you do have to pre-wash them to avoid shrinkage after you finish sewing. Also, for this more elegant look of a neck warmer, I chose satin-backed crepe. I think that makes a lovely look right there. Now, let's get started with the sewing. It is very simple sewing, as a matter of fact. You cut a rectangle, and this is where you have to decide how long and how high you want your neck warmer to be. For example, this size is quite wide. It's 9 inches by 36. It's quite generously sized. The one I've got on is quite narrow. It's 6 inches by 30. This pink one I'll be working on is 8 inches by 34. What you'll do is cut your fabric into the rectangle, the length and width of your choice, and you're going to sew a half inch seam all the way around your fabrics. They've been placed right sides together. So you go all the way around the perimeter except leaving an opening of maybe three or four inches so that you can turn this inside out. I always mark the stopping point of my sewing to leave that opening because I daydream when I'm doing straight sewing and often I'll shoot right by that and then have to go and unpick the stitches later. One thing you do want to do before you turn this inside out is clip your corners because the boiled wool is quite thick. It's bulky and you want to remove the bulk from that corner. So you clip it, taking care not to clip your stitching. Then you turn it inside out and you prepare it for top stitching. Top stitching gives the neck warmer a little bit more substance. So it tends to stand up like that. I used a quarter inch top stitch all the way around the perimeter of my rectangle. And the good thing about that is as you're doing the top stitching, that's going to close up that opening you left for your turning and take care of that opening. Then you have to decide how you're going to close your neck warmer. The standard way is to bring the ends together in this triangle shape with the attachments up here. But it doesn't have to be that way. Instead of a single point, you can go for a double point like the one I'm wearing. That takes just a single button and one snap underneath. This also takes a single snap and one button, but it's a little bit different. I love the inside fabric so much I wanted to bring it to the outside. So I just flipped that edge back and secured it 
with my button. I also used a little bit of embellishment underneath the button. One of the great things about boiled wool is that it's very resistant to fraying. So I went to my kitchen, I got a couple of glasses, and I got my fabric marker, and on my scraps, I just traced around them to get some shapes that I could kind of play with to go underneath my buttons. Now, on this version, I have just one layer of the pink underneath my button, but up here you can see I use two layers, one in the dark gray and one in the red with the button on top. And don't forget, sewing snaps, the metal snaps, very easy sewing, simple stitching. You should have no problem with that at all. Stay warm this winter.